testing? You got one more to let in? One more to let in? One more Zoom connection? Good evening, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, please call the roll. Councilwoman DeGroote. Here. Councilwoman Hayner. Here. Supervisor Quigley. Here. Councilman Secreto. Councilman Van Cleek. Good evening and welcome to the Town of Ulster Town board meeting for July 18th. Uh, we have three public hearings on our agenda tonight. We will start out with our standard routine of business and when the appropriate time comes, we will go to the public hearing. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Thank you. Are there any citizens here tonight who would like to speak on agenda items? Please. Come to the podium. Uh, my name is Rich Virgili, and um, I live right on a road here, Salt Hill Road, on Denver Road, 34 Denver Road. And um, I just want to be able to respond to the presentation uh, a little later on. For the public hearing? Excuse me? Yes. For the public, okay. yes. We'll have public comment during the public hearing see session for your specific questions. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals here tonight on any agenda items? Thank you very much. I will call for the approval of the minutes. I will take them one at a time. The meeting minutes for June 6th. I have a motion to accept. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. The meeting minutes for June 20th, 2024. May I have a motion? I have a second. All those in favor? Aye. The meeting minutes for the special town board meeting of June 28th. I request a roll call vote, please. Motion. motion to accept. We have a second. Roll call vote, please. Councilwoman DeGroote. Yes. Councilwoman Hayner. Supervisor Quigley. Abstain since I wasn't here. Councilman Secreto and Councilman Van Cleek. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Reeby, communications. Frank, pay attention. I have one letter. Yeah. This is uh, epic. <laughs> it's actually great. It's actually a great letter. Received from the Superintendent of Schools, Kingston City School District, Dr. Paul Padalino. Dear Chief, Chief Berardi and the Town of Ulster Police Department, on behalf of the Kingston High School Class of 2024 and the entire Kingston City School District, I want to thank you for all of your efforts and assistance to make our graduation ceremony a success. From setting up the week prior to the event to traffic control and being on call for any needs we had on the day of, you and your officers were amazingly helpful on every level. It was a spectacular day that meant so much to our students and families. This event would not have happened without your neighborly cooperation and generosity. Thank you again for everything. Thank you very much for the communications. Abstract of claims. We have a couple of things here. The abstract of claims for the month of July, 2024. The total was 930,882.54. I did review this with Tashka, our controller. There is nothing here that is unusual or should be brought to attention. It's just the normal course of the town business. So I make a, a motion that this be accepted. Any discussion? All those in favor? 
Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, the second item in reference to finance relates to budget transfers and modifications. Okay. Again, I reviewed these with uh, Tashka, our controller. There was nothing unusual. It's a typical mid-year adjustment made on uh, the uh, budget items. You'll see where they were transferred from and where they transferred to. Uh, the first page shows $90,572.73. The second page is the larger ones, but it's not untypical because it has to do with appropriation of interest and some other things. It was 936193 Can we move those as two as together, Jim? We will move two. Okay, so I make a motion that we accept both of these, please. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Um. Ms. Reavy, the next item under new business is a presentation and acceptance of the town clerk's monthly report. Before I call for a motion, is there anything you wish to call out to the town board's attention that happened in June? Nothing to report, no. Check was a little small, but I'll take it. I may have a motion to accept the town clerk's monthly report for the month of June. I'll make that. We have a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. The next item is presentation and acceptance of the supervisor's monthly report. Ms. Sweeney, is there anything that you would like to call to the attention of the board that is present in this report? Nothing unusual. Mr. Quigley, yes. Uh on the report, there's nothing wrong. I just want to uh, mention that because of uh, our positive cash situation that we've been able to experience so far this year, you've been able to, uh, we've been able to get some good interest rate. Do we know what it is to date that you think we've gotten overall? Uh, that number is in the detailed uh, fund section that yeah. was distributed with the report. Yeah. Did you know, do you remember off the top? I don't remember what it was. But it was I still, can't tell it, you off the top. It's significant, though. It's, it's really, significant. It's significant. Which is what drove the budget modifications, right. because if you look at the detailed budget modifications, we recognized additional interest income in the general and highway fund, which you were used to fund expenses that were expected to be over budget for the year. That's why I want to bring it to you. I make a motion we accept it. You have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of each accounting year, the Town of Ulster's fund balance policy requires a presentation of a schedule of the fund balances. And usually there's a recommendation for appropriation of monies within those fund balances to fund specific capital programs. There is a presentation. No vote is required. There's no action on the behalf of the town board required on this tonight. This will be back on the agenda on August 14th. It is being presented with one month's worth of time for people to analyze it and come up with comments. Mr. Secreto, the next three items of personnel. Uh, this letter was sent to Chief Berardi. And it's from Emily Aldrich. Uh, it goes, Chief Berardi, per our discussion, I am submitting a, a letter of resignation. I have, a, have been officially sworn in in the city of Poughkeepsie Police Department today, mm -hmm. July 2nd, 2024. Please accept this letter as my resignation from the position of a part-time officer with the town of Ulster Police Department. And it's effective July 2nd, 2024. And I make a motion that we accept that. I'll second that. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. The next one, sir. Uh, this comes at the request of our highway superintendent, Frank Petromo, uh, to be a seasonal highway employee. His name is Tyler Circasano. Comes out of the highway department, highway fund. It's a part-time seasonal position, non-competitive, non-union. Uh, wage is $17 an hour. Start date is 0701 2024. And I make a motion that we hire Tyler. I'll second that. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? 
Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. This is another uh, resignation letter. And this went to uh, our sewer and wastewater superintendent and uh, the employees wrote, I, John Pomeroy, am resigning from my position as wastewater operator trainee at the Ulster Sewer District, effective August 2nd, 2024, at 3 p.m. This letter serves as official notice. Thank you for your understanding and opportunity. And I make the motion that we accept this letter too. And I, I have a question. Do you all know when the sewer department hired waste when wastewater hired some extra people, they intentionally hired maybe more than what they needed because they thought, are we meeting the demand of employees? That, like we thought that maybe somebody would resign out of the whole bunch. Do you know if this is within what we thought? Well, it's, I think it happens with water and sewer more than yeah. any well, police department more yeah. than anything. You know. So are we still staffed okay at the moment, or are they going to be looking for more? Well, it's I, something we can look at as seasonal employees, you know. Mr. Majuri is on vacation this week. I will make a note to follow up with him. Okay. I'll take a ride down and meet with him. Okay. The town of Ulster we went to, to vote on that. We just need to vote. On that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. The town of Ulster went to public bid for a construction contract number TU-233, which is the replacement of the potable water storage tank of 450,000 gallons in the Ulster Water District. Tonight, we are presented with payment application number one in the amount of $110,200, as recommended by the town engineers, Bernier and Larios. I ask for a motion to authorize this payment. I'll make it. Any discussion? Do we know where we are on projection on this? Are we in uh, in line, ahead, behind? This is the first payment we're making. Uh, I don't expect the contract to overrun the budget. I do expect at the end of the project that we will be giving back a portion of the grant because it will not be spent Good. to the county. So nothing unexpected. Nothing unexpected at this time. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Last year, around this time, Town of Ulster Town Board passed a resolution declaring its intent to be lead agency for a seeker review and scheduled a public hearing for the special use permit um, for a cell tower on the lands of Sam and Bonnie to Seco. The project was held up by the FAA because of the height of the tower. Verizon subsequently had negotiations with the FAA, reduced the height to the tower, and now is back starting the process over again. So tonight in our package is a motion declaring the intent of the Town of Ulster Town Board to be lead agency for Seeker and scheduling a public hearing for the special use permit for August 1st, 2024. That is the correct Thursday in August. August 1st, 2024 at 7, 7, 10 p.m. for a proposed cell tower at 434 Flatbush Road. May I have a motion to accept the resolution as presented? Uh, and I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Larios, although this was not an issue that we had talked about the next resolution is the standardization of the Hungerford and Terry equipment in the town of Ulster Water Departments. Could you speak on that, please? In uh, 1978, the town acquired the Halcyon Park water system, established a water district there, and you installed uh, an iron and manganese removal system manufactured by Hungerford and Terry um, in 1988 or so, um, when you expanded, largely expanded your water plant for the Ulster Water District, uh, again, um, you selected Hungerford and Terry iron and manganese and softening equipment for that plant. Um, purpose of this resolution is to allow you to retain Hungerford and Terry to replace the media and provide service technicians to assist your water department 
in replacing media that has uh, gone past its useful life, and particularly green sand media that's used for the iron and manganese removal. Um, so standardization is necessary to keep the Hungerford and Terry designed equipment running efficiently. Right, with their technical support. And okay. I think in our discussion, you had confirmed that the Hungerford and Terry system actually outlived what its expected life was. Is that what I saw in the report from that? Well, certainly a Halcyon Park it has. Yeah. Um, because you had, you've uh, you've replaced the media before at the Ulster Water Plant, mm -hmm. but you've never had to replace the media at Halcyon Park. Um, part of the reason for that is the filter is 150 gallon a minute filter and you're just not using that kind of water in Halcyon Park. Um, but um, so that 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 was a little surprising that the media had never needed replacement because you were getting your iron and manganese removal um, through through the existing media. But um, since you're taking on a, a new larger customer and the media is forty five years old, forty seven years, I don't know. Yeah, it's old. It's old, and uh, it's it's time, and it's it's in the really in the best interest of the town to re retain a relationship with Hungerford and Terry, um, whose equipment is in in both your water plants. And since you're almost as old as the media, <laughs> um. <laughs> and this Huckerford and Terry system, there, from what I can tell by looking through the notes and things, that system has served the town well, with almost without question. Correct? Is, is that correct? Yes. Okay. So, um, I'm I'm satisfied. And one of the reasons uh, in Halcyon Park uh, was a private water company, and there were a lot of complaints. And of course, private water companies can't do what municipal districts can do, um, like tax. <laughs> Uh, you were also able to, uh, was, and it was the first job I did for the town of Ulster um, when I was fresh out of college, but you were able to get, uh, remember Jimmy Carter? Well, there was uh, EDA funding put out in 1978 because of the economic conditions, and you were able to get a grant for Halcyon Park, which allowed you to both acquire it and upgrade it, and also for Spring Lake, which allowed you to put in the Spring Lake Water District. Okay. Both in 1978. Okay, may I have a motion to accept the resolution as presented? Any discussion? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, it's approximately 718. We had a public hearing scheduled for 710. Dennis, you can sit down. I'm going to call a public hearing. <laughs> um, the 710 public hearing is a special use permit for sage cannabis at 268 Forest Hill Drive in Kingston. Mr. Kovacs, under our zoning code, can you explain the reasons why the Town of Ulster Town Board is required to issue special use permits for these uses? Thank you, Supervisor. Uh, as the Town Board knows, we recently adopted some changes to our zoning code to uh, comply with the um, the new state laws on cannabis. And under our code, we do require a special permit uh, for cannabis uh, dispensaries and the process for special permits require a public hearing. Thank you. Uh, Sage Cannabis has appeared before the town planning board. They are proposing a retail operation in a retail zoned area. They are fully within the zoning allowed for the site and specifically the specified zoning under our newly implemented uh, cannabis retailing law. So with that said, may I have a motion to open public hearing? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ladies and gentlemen, um, if you have any comments on the special use permit being granted by the Town of Ulster Town Board for Sage Cannabis at 268 Forest Hill Drive in Kingston, please come to the podium, state your name, and please make your comments. I'll make a motion. We close the public uh, hearing for that. I have a motion. Do I have a second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. 715 is a special use permit for the joint can cannabis dispensary at 1221 Ulster Avenue in Kingston. I ask for a motion to open the public hearing. Second. All those in favor? 
I. Again, ladies and gentlemen, if you have um, comments on the special use permit to be issued by the Town of Ulster Town Board for the joint cannabis dispensary on 1221 Ulster Avenue in Kingston, please come to the podium and we will hear your comments. Do I have a second? Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, this public hearing has now been closed. Ladies and gentlemen, for those who are here on behalf of the applicants, the Town of Ulster has a standard 30-day written comment period where we will leave the public hearing open upon expiration of the 30 days and receipt and review of any public comment. We will then make a decision. It's a lot easier if there are no written comments for us to make a decision. So please keep that in mind. And... Uh, we will move on to the last one on our public hearing agenda. Mr. Kovacs, could you explain to us why we are required to have a public hearing for the site plan amendment and a special use permit for the venue on the Hill? Yes, uh, Supervisor, as uh, the board knows, this type of particular use uh, is subject to uh, planning board uh, site plan approval, but also uh, a special permit of the town board due to the unique nature of the use. Thank you. With that, I'd like a motion to open a public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ladies and gentlemen, please come forward. If you have a comment to make, your turn, sir. Uh, thank you. My name is Rich Fragilli. Uh, I'm a member of the uh, local community here. Um, and um, uh, the Cherry Hill section uh, where I live is adjacent to the place where the venue in the Hill is making their proposal. And um, one of my concerns is the uh, the level of noise that might be there based on past history. Uh, a second item I have, I'm thinking of also is since we're personally uh, my house, a couple others, are directly adjacent to that property. Uh, in the past, um, they, 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 that property had been used um, where the parking was just in the back of our house up on the hill. Uh, and according to the proposal, it says between 9 a.m. if the event is approved up till uh, 10 p.m., is this so? One of the questions I have also is where's the besides where's the parking? Secondly, what is the proposal specifically for this event? Based on what I read from the Ulster County Planning Board, it seems like, and I may have this wrong, uh, does each event have to go before the board with detail for you know, you folks? with details about how many people they expect to be there, uh, what hours are they gonna use, or is it wide open? The permit is to have a standard set of rules that will be granted by the town board that they are required to operate under. And if they fail to operate under, the permit can be revoked. The enforcing agency is the building department, okay? Um, I do not have the package of the application in front of me. If you would call my office tomorrow and provide me with an email address, I will email you everything they presented to the town planning board. And I believe there's a site plan map in there that would show you the parking area, the distance from the houses to the parking area that you're talking about on the border. And I believe that there is a resolution from the planning board that outlines the operating conditions that you're referencing. Well, that's very helpful. So, thank you. Uh, can, and can, and if and if for some reason any of the neighbors, including myself, see a little problem with that, can we thirty days written comment? Send me an email. Goes into the town clerk as comment coming from this public hearing, and it will be addressed when we come back to review the application for a vote. And right now, do we have a planned date for the first event? Mr. Todd, I don't think they can schedule an event until they get the permit. Uh-huh. Okay, so nothing can happen until they, they get the permit. And will that be posted? 
the permit? No, when the when the first event, for example, would happen, because they can have as many as ten events during the course of a year on weekends, and two events, up to two events on weekdays. Okay, so my recommendation for you is when you make your comments, make a written statement that you would like to see a public posting in some portion of the town, something accessible by the public of what their events are, and we will see if we can get them to notify us when they're having events so that it can be communicated to you. Thank you. You're welcome. 34 Denver Road. Go ahead. Am I okay? You're fine. Hello, my name is Jessica Davis and I reside at 17 Denver Road, 10 years this coming Monday. Um, I am also concerned with this proposal of the venue on the hill. Um, mostly based on experience living without these neighbors and then with these neighbors in our neighborhood. Um, and on a few uh, a concern, one of the concerns I have is 400 potential people uh, transporting themselves in and out of 261 Sock Hill Road on that turn on Sock Hill Road where people often tend to speed. Um, how are we going to be doing uh, keeping that road safe? Are we going to be burdening our police department with the incoming and outgoing traffic? Um, that is a, a major concern of mine, as I almost did not move to this neighborhood because of that bend in the road. My other concern is the noise level based on events in the past. There was a tent there um, that hosted many parties uh, sounded like a DJ was there, very loud music, late hours of the night. And I have been here and stood before this group, uh, different faces, some familiar. I know the supervisor was here several years ago uh, when we were having a major problem with illegal fireworks being uh, produced at this location on a regular basis during the warmer months of the year. That has, I will respectfully say, been scaled back mostly to like major patriotic holidays. Although this year on July 3rd, 4th and 5th, we experienced these fireworks. And if you were in our Cherry Hill neighborhood watch group, which I know some of the police have previously been in, you would see that there was one loud boom so loud that the entire neighborhood shook uh, sometime after maybe 1030 or 11 o'clock at night. I have stopped burdening the local police department with calls. I do know some of my neighbors still do that. We just try to push through it and call it 4th of July. Um, but I do have a dog that has seizures and I do have a neighbor that has Parkinson's that lives directly behind these neighbors. I have not gone to the neighbor's property and asked them not to do these things because that's their private property. And I don't feel I really need to. I would like my town support in this. So I'm, I'm gravely concerned about the noise level, the quality of life, and also the traffic flow. So I will write some of my concerns, um, Supervisor Quigley, and get them out to you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Chris Gagne. I'm at 30 Denver Road, uh, living right next door to Rich Virgelli. And directly behind me is this location. I grew up, it, this is the house I grew up in. It used to be a very quiet hill. As children, we went up there, played in the pond, fishing, all that kind of thing. Since this group has been there, it's been extremely noisy. Things have been curtailed quite a bit. Um, but these, I don't know how to explain them, uh, events or jamborees or religious uh, uh, revivals or whatever are extensive. They are very, very, very loud. I actually pulled up a map of my property line. And if you go to Zwillow and you look at the satellite, they happen to catch a picture of what the tent was. It's It goes up and it comes down. They happen to catch a picture and you can see the location. It's very, very close. Uh, and if you want to, I can show it to you. No, I'll check Zillow. Okay, because it's a satellite thing and it's near the pond directly behind their house. 
And um, because it's a hill, this amplified music, and it's not just a DJ, it's full live bands, amplified music, 400 people, it carries. It carries for miles, literally. You can hear it on the other side of the neighborhood. Fireworks, uh, the long history of that, they do continue not as much as before. Um, she mentioned the neighbor across the street with Parkinson's. That's my mother, who I take care of and have been for quite a while. Our dog did run away with the July. Luckily, a neighbor clearly clear on the other side of the neighborhood was able to grab it before it ended up down at Salt Hill Road or worse, the throughway. This is kind of common. But it's mostly the uh, these events. They are so loud, they last all day long, and parking is a big issue, especially for me, because what used to be a quiet and serene forested backyard, there is a hill, is now a parking lot. And I'm not talking, I'm talking about visually, I can see all the cars. And at night, it's all tail lights. And when this neighborhood was built as a suburban residential neighborhood, um, I don't think a commercial parking lot in my backyard was in its design at all. And, and it goes on late. Um, and so I have a big concern about that. So, and some questions might be, uh, you'll post us if this proposal passes, but I don't seem to think we have all, the, will it pass before we get the information? Will we know where they're going to cite music? Will we know where they're going to cite parking before it passes? This was all supposed to be reviewed by the planning board, and it'll be in the documentation that I provide to Mr. Verrilli. Okay, uh, before you pass it. Yes. Before, oh, okay. So okay, we have so time to. There's have always been a series of reviews by the planning board of the proposed uses on the site, which would address traffic, would address environmental impacts, it will address parking, okay, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So that the, all the everything will be cited right. because if it if they plan on putting it all where it was, that's really no good, no bueno. Uh, it's just uh, um, I I do believe people can do what. They would like with their own property, but I'm familiar with it, especially as a kid. I know things have changed. There's a lot of property there. If they go further back, farther up the hill, there's no residents up there. They they can they can change their planning, adjust them accordingly to their needs. But right now, it's a big imposition on this neighborhood. And Jess mentioned the safety issue with Salt Hill Road. I think she, she mentioned that they go fast. It's also a blind turn. And that entrances right there on that blind turn you're you have had problems there and if they do this you will again and anyway, thank you sir thanks for your consideration are there any other individuals who would like to speak tonight on the matter see someone moving up from the back hi my name is elaine cruz i'm on 42 denver road and i'm actually speaking on behalf of the events. I live on the other side of Mr. Vigeli, so my property does border them as well. I don't have the same concerns as the people have spoken already. Um, I know a lot of the complaints are the partying and the noise. The biggest complaint that they had happened to be a wedding, and they're condemning people for celebrating their daughter's wedding. The fireworks, they did do it a lot in the past. They have cut down Fourth of July fireworks this year, ironically, it wasn't even them. It was the local fireworks that were being set off. They didn't set any off this year. They may have sent a couple off, but the big boom was the, the local fire to fireworks that were sent off. Um, the way they have it set up, and as Ganya said, the place has always been kid-friendly. If they would just go up and talk to them, they would make it friendly for everybody. My daughter and myself, we have four wheelers. They let us go up riding on their property on the side by side. They welcome us. They ride on my property. There's never been any issues. If they would just, the people with concerns, if they would just take the time to speak to them about their concerns instead of ridiculing them right away, they, they would have a different response for them. They're very open, very welcoming to anybody going up and talking to them. And as for the parking, they have a large piece of property. Yes, it is at the top of the hill. 
you see the lights from the pond more than you do the cars. Um, and I, I vote for them to be able to do whatever they like up there. It's their property. They're doing a good thing for the kids. They, they have kids up there all the time in the pond swimming. They're just a great group of people. And I think they just need to be able to do what they want to do on their property. And they, they abide by the laws. You know, when it was the wedding, they did run a little late. It's a wedding. Who doesn't run late at a wedding? But their other parties usually end on time. Not too bad. They play music during the day, during their church ceremonies. And I'm right there. I can hear it all as well. And I actually enjoy it. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, go ahead. Hold on, sir. Are the fireworks legal that are going and being shot off? I just am curious because last time we addressed that. this. I don't know what fireworks are being set off. The ones that are going up into the sky. We'll have to get back to you on okay, that. Okay, we'll good. Because I know the last time you were alarmed that it was happening mm -hmm. and we did discover, in fact, it was. Okay. Sir? My name is Benjamin Raposa. I live at 10 Denver Road, which is at the base of the Ortman's property, the property that's in speak of right now. Um, all I have to say is I am in favor of the Ortmans being able to do what they wish with their property up there. Since they moved into our neighborhood, they have been nothing but kind. They've helped me numerous of times <clears throat> when I was in a situation, their sons would come down, help me out around oh, trying to do this without getting excited. Um, they are a great family. They will help anybody. If you ask, all you have to do is go talk to them. A lot of people are stuck in their ways. They have a lot of young people that live up there. They have a great family, but any one of them are willing to help anybody in our neighborhood. And everybody knows that. And I don't understand why everyone keeps complaining about it, but I vote for them to be able to do what they wish. I'm not going to carry this on any longer, but thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Any other additional comments on this specific application? Ladies and gentlemen, I will again say that there is a, a written comment period of 30 days that are open from the closure of this meeting. They should be submitted to the town of Ulster town clerk, and then they will be submitted and discussed. They will be submitted to the town board and discussed in consideration of our next um, opportunity to review this. Ms. Reeby, I have a question to ask though. In, in, in thinking about this, our planning board minutes are actively and actually available through our website. But the submitted applications and the site plans that were used during the evaluation of the project are on the town's website um, it's on our it's accessible through our calendar page based upon the day of the planning board meeting, which is usually second Tuesday of every month. I believe this meeting on this specific project was the second Tuesday in June, if not the second Tuesday in May, but that does not relieve me of my obligation to contact you. Any other comments? May I have a motion to close the public hearing? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Nobody's opposed. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, returning to our scheduled new business agenda. There's a resolution presented tonight authorizing the town assessor to prepare and the town clerk to solicit for requests for, for proposals for professional services for a townwide reassessment project. The town's last full reval was in 2003. This is a matter that has been sporadically talked about, but not talked about recently. I would like to stress if anyone has an issue with considering this resolution, I will be more than happy to defer it to the next meeting. Does anybody have any concerns about the appropriateness on voting on this meeting, this resolution tonight? I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. May I have a motion to accept the resolution presented, authorizing the town assessor to move forward? I would take that. Okay. Any discussion? Yeah. What do we 
if we go ahead with that, what is a time schedule that we would estimate something like that to take? Mr. Baker, I saw thank you for right coming. Now. Mr. Van Cleek has a question that is more appropriately answered by you. On the reval, what do you think a timeline would look like? Can we stipulate that when we go out to bid on something? Can we stipulate a, a, a time frame that we'd like it done in, or is that not possible? Does that cost us more? The cost is the token. Is it practical to ask for it both ways, one with a time? In your experience, do you have any experience as far as how long this should take with this many? We do. Ask for a certain whole year, put out bids for evaluation about the bid and such and such. For one two years, the response will be back. The bottom line is taxable status date starts March 1st so that any revaluation exercise must be completed prior to March 1st to be effective for that March 1st starting period. So May 1st, 2026, be effective for January 1, 2027 for town and county taxes. Okay. So I just want to get an idea of what, our, what, what the kind of schedule we'll be looking at. Hey, Dan. How involved is the um, the assessor's office going to be with Matt and my wife leaving? At the Dan, you may want to come up to the podium. Thank you. I mean, we're, we're going to have a new clerk in there. The assessor's office is going to have to be involved. You know, uh, the mean, assessor's office came on board. The assessor's office is going to still have to run its day-to-day -day operations, uh, all along with monitoring um, and making sure that the any company that the town would hire would uh, be on pace to you know to complete the project and also be able to dig in and take some measurements itself to see you know where their numbers are are, are leading to and making sure that you know they're appropriate and they're using appropriate methodologies to come up with those um you know this during this revaluation um, you're going to have to hire the company to go out and do a full data collection. That's part of the process. Um, so it's uh, it's an involved process. And, you know, that's why you need to go out to bid and see what each bid comes back and see what services each bid is going to provide. But the assessor's office is still going to have to do its day-to-day -day duties, provide administration of the exemption, let's say for seniors and veterans and, and STAR, um, process the sales that are be, gonna be used for future future data. Um, and as we're doing now, we're processing all that information that'll probably be used in the revaluation. So we still have to do the day-to-day -day operation. And so there'll be more work, no doubt. So if I, uh, based upon prior conversations, it will probably be first quarter of 2025 before we do an award a contract to undertake this process, correct? Yeah, I would hope uh, if uh, we can put an uh, RFP together 
Um, obviously, you can have uh, some consultation with Office of Real Property Tax before we send something like that out. Uh, they're probably the most experienced guiding agency in 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 those uh, in, in this aspect. Uh, that's what they do. Um, probably um, have a consult with this this board as well, some informational session as what it would really involve. And then, yeah, we're going to want uh, a um, an award somewhere in and about there. Um, I think the bids that we get back will help us with that time frame to be able to see who can who can complete it at what time. Okay, so it, in taking into consideration the award, it will be the town board's ability to make an award based upon performance standards, correct? Correct, yep. So if someone says they can do it in 12 months or someone says it in 15 months, it'll be our discretion to pick the appropriate contract yep. as well as price. Yeah, and I think this is the start. It would be a kickoff of a fact-finding mission by this board and being able to pull all the data together that they need to make the appropriate decision uh, to do this. I think uh, we definitely have the ability to put together a team to be able to do it. Um, and we're going to need, you know, professionals to do it and have professionals within the office to take care of the day to day and, and monitor the monitor, the revaluation. When was the last time it was done in the town of Ulster? Um, I was looking back at the records today. looks like it's 2003. Mr. Maloney did it in house on his own. And there was, uh, there was not one in 20, 2002, but it looked like. Also, 2000 and 2001, there was some sort of revaluation as well. Um, I don't know if what the situation was at that point in time. Okay, thank yeah. you. All right. Any additional discussions? I also think that that's what no, I know. No, that's just when I'm sitting there, how I'm often, sure you know what happens in the well, city? Of well, you, you did sit on the Board of Assessment Appeals for a while, so you understand what happens when the valuations are not appropriate. You have experience in the city of Kingston as well, right? I am currently the assessor in the city of Kingston as well. So can I ask you how often they do theirs? The last uh, full reappraisal reassessment was in 2008. And then from 2009 to 2019, the city of Kingston processed what they call non-reappraisal reassessment. So using the 2008 numbers and trending different valuation districts, different types of properties, looking at the market and seeing where the trends of, of those properties would go and making adjustments to those. But they were not full-blown appraisals of each property from 2009 to 2019. Um, that's some, another thing the town would want to look at is... If they do do a reassessment, what the plan would be moving forward? Would it be just do a reassessment and then after that just use an equalization rate to capture the fair market value? Or would the town want to invest into services that also uh, for non reappraisal reassessment and keeping the assessment at 100% assessed, which would be an assessment and a fair market value, which is published on the assessment roll as the same number? The equalization rate would be 100. And that's something that you'd wait till then to recommend to us, or is that something you would have a leaning toward now? I would think we, through the process, we can discuss that and and uh, develop that um, as we put out the RF RFP, and uh, you know that's going to be combination. I think decision between the board and and mm -hmm. and, and the office of you know, office of the assessor to see you know what we what we can do. Okay. I have one other question, then I'll be quiet. Uh, commercial and personal are going to be done separately. On um, as do we do it separately, residential and commercial? No, you would my have question. You do everything. You would have to do every single from property A to Z. From A oh. to Z. Yep. Okay. That's that's what would be required. You, you can't just reassess some properties and not others. You would have to do them all, and they would be all. All put onto one single assessment role. Right. I just met with commercial properties being recently purchased. Do we go out and reassess those now as they're being purchased? And then we have something to compare it to. That was my question. No, we collect that data, right? So we see that sale, make note of that sale, but no, you, um, we don't reassess. New York State does not uh, allow that, right? Okay. So you have to have a uniform 
uh, assessment and you can't just because someone or some person or some entity purchases a property for a certain price make a change to that assessment it's called welcome stranger that's not allowed it's uh, illegal in new york state thank you very much yeah. i'd like to point out to the community that um you have frequently heard the town boards talk about tax searcher actions these actions are basically court cases under Article 7 of the Real Property Tax Law, where an owner of a property feels that the market value of his property in relation to where it really is, is unjust, and he sues the town. The problem that the town has is that over the years, we have kept our assessed values stable. And as the equalization rates change, the math changes the market value and drives the market value up as their equalization rates are driven down. And unfortunately, the appreciation in the real market for the properties that this impacts do not keep up with the changes that are implied by the math in the town's tax roll. Consequently, we end up with a series of tax search for reactions, lawsuits against the town, which we are forced to spend money on defending. Any other questions for Mr. Baker? Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you. So we have a resolution. Uh, we have a motion and a second. May I have a roll call vote, please? Yes. 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 Thank you very much. We move on to new business discussion items. These are items that usually would take place in caucus, which did not occur tonight. The first item is a discussion on the application to the Ulster County Solar Grant Program. County Executive's Office in June released a outline for a grant program. I believe it was two and a half million dollars or two something to incent local communities, towns and villages up to $100,000 to invest in renewable energy or electric vehicle charging stations. So I will leave. I have prepared two sample grant applications, both for approximately $50,000 each. One covers the installation of a demonstration project at the town of Ulster transfer station to, uh, provide the electric to that facility. And the second item is a similar sized installation for the Whittier wastewater treatment plant, which would be fully consumed by the operations down there since that is a high electricity user. So I open the floor for discussion amongst the board members. I looked through the applications that you've got there and I sat through one meeting with the county a couple of months ago. I think both of these applications are uh, uh, practical. I think they uh, demonstrate a continued uh, lean toward our desire to be to use solar where it's appropriate. Uh, I personally am not in favor of solars being put, solar panels being put in cornfields. Uh, I use that as an exaggeration, but both of these cases put the solar panels, I think, in places that wouldn't be detrimental to the community, but then provide real uh, grassroots. Uh, uh, energy right where we need it. So uh, I like the size of it and I like the way it's done and I think it fits within their package. So I'm in favor of it. Anyone else? Seeing that the grant application is due tomorrow, does someone choose to make a uh, motion to move forward? I will make the motion. Any discussion? So the motion that we are voting on is a motion to authorize the Town of Ulster Supervisor to submit the two proposals that are included in our package tonight to the Ulster County Executive's Office for consideration of a solar grant to the Town of Ulster. The funds that are to be provided by the Town of Ulster as local match, the Whittier Sewer District has sufficient funding to fund the portion for the Whittier plant and the town of Ulster's landfill closure fund has sufficient funding to fund 
the contribution required by the general fund for the transfer station. So with that, may I have a roll call vote, please? Yes. 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 Thank you very much. Mr. Pub Tut, would you approach the podium, please? The next item on our agenda is a discussion on the re-roofing project proposed for the Ulster County Business Resource Center on Ulster Avenue and its impact on the community. So a little over a week ago, I was approached by the Deputy Director of Buildings and Grounds for the county to inform me that the county was looking at undertaking the entire replacement of the roof, meaning remove all of the substructure and put a new substructure on. That being said, the project would take series of weeks because you can't take the whole roof off it's an occupied building so they would have to take portions off so that consequently prolongs it rather than do it during the daytime hours because of the occupants they propose to do it overnight now i'll address a couple of things first is according to department of state the governing agencies the state and the county if they have their own building departments the local municipality cannot cannot regulate building permits. So they basically self-govern themselves as far as permitting inspections and the like. None of us agree, but so then it comes to the topic of zoning. So I reached out to um an individual I know who's much more versed in zoning zoning when it comes to things like this to ask him. He said it comes to what they call a balancing act. Balance out the pros and the cons. So what would the pro be for them to do it overnight? Does that outweigh outweigh the negative, which is going to be the disruption, the potential disruption of the noise overnight for that entire residential district, which is rather large? I asked the deputy director to reach out to his superiors to start a conversation with either the supervisor or the board about what we could do for this. I made a call as late as three o'clock this afternoon. I have not gotten any response one way or the other. So they've gone radio silent. I don't know what their proposal is. I don't know when they're starting. Um, and if it comes down to, you know, the case of they give us a time frame, we can address it. If they give us a time frame, then we can look at that and come back to them about it. Because we know for a fact that if they do this overnights, we had the same issue when we did the road repaving. If they do it overnight, we are going to get noise complaints. So I wanted the board to be aware of this before it actually happened. They haven't given me a time frame when they think they're going to start or how long they think it'll take. But if we look at the log to the jail, I won't go there. So does anyone on the board have... Um... Any thoughts on how to handle the matter? The thought that I have is that you would do the best you can to maintain or create some kind of uh, discussion with them. Because not only are we town of Ulster, we are part of the county of mm -hmm. Ulster. So that building, we, we are part of the county. So that's got to get done. Roof's got to get done. And what is the best way to do it? And like you said, the balancing act of the disruption to the neighborhood versus the safety of the occupants of the building, which yeah. is the, the reason they they can do it during the day. Their their issue is that it would take longer. OK, because if you have an occupied building, now we have to worry about people because if you've been by there, they're in the front door, they're out the back door, they're on the street, they're everywhere. So now you're worried about the people below. OK, because you're doing demolition, you're taking it off the top of the building. It has to go over the side. You're bringing you bring materials to the building. You have to crane them in. Now you got to cordon that section off. So logistically, it can be done. Okay, they did it on top of um, Benderson's Plaza. Mm -hmm. The difference with Benderson was they didn't take the roof deck off. Oh, this is coming off. This they have to take the they. I won't say the roof deck. They have to take all the coverings. Okay, so they're going to take the, the the roof covering and whatever insulation happens to be there because they want to increase their insulation values so that they can have a more energy efficient building. So the logistics of it, can it be done during the day? Yes. Would it take longer? Absolutely. 
So, so we're going to have a problem at nighttime as we get, you're talking about through the night hours, there's going to be a lighting issue and they can't, they're not, they're, there's going to be light uh, going off into the neighborhood because they're for safety, for OSHA safety, they're going to have to have lights shining on all the perimeter with the tape up and everything. So I can imagine we're going to have complaints about lights shining in windows in throughout the neighborhood. You'll have light trespass, you'll have noise. Um, mm -hmm. at, the, at this point, they haven't given me a time frame of when they're mm -hmm. going to start and they also haven't you know given me any sort of a plan okay but like i said according to the department of state i don't have any input for the project similar to when they did the remodel i'll keep i'll keep inquiring you know so if they if they finally give me a plan or a time frame and and what it's going to look like but they only have to do that as a courtesy which is why i tried to get you have to have a courtesy to the neighbors too mm-hmm we don't want them to all of a sudden nine o'clock at night they got spotlight for Oh no, I, I, I agree hundred percent. Okay. It's it's the question of how I go about getting this information. Now I was we had I've had you know I had a conversation with the supervisor and it was presented that possibly if we have a request from the board to send to the county versus just a lowly building inspector who has no regulation. So if the board put an inquiry, we you know, we have a serious concern. For not only the disturbance of the neighborhood, but the safety of the neighborhood, can we have an idea of what you're proposing to do? That may actually yeah. hold more weight. When well, we've got two county legislators here, I think. I believe so. So would a would we be able to formulate right now exactly to what you said? We, as the board, are concerned about the impact of the community. We understand why they want to do it at nighttime, but we are concerned about the impact. We need more information. We need to know what nights of the week it'll be, mm -hmm. how they would protect against lighting going off the going out in the neighborhood, how they're going to protect about excessive noise, what their site plan will be, and what their plan is to work with us. And if we could ask our two legislators to help us also, but so if, could we first, could I make a resolution that please you, try your best to formulate it? Yeah, that's why I'm gonna need help from everybody here. But we are instructing you or asking you to go back to the county and tell them that this board is concerned about that, understanding their needs. And Sue, I hope you're getting all this. So I make a motion to authorize the town building inspector on behalf of the town of Ulster town board to communicate to the office of public safety Buildings and well, it starts with to buildings. the buildings and grounds office of Ulster County. The town board's concern that this project may have on the neighborhood around the Ulster County mm -hmm. Business Resource Center concerning issues relating to overnight noise, lighting, safety, safety, and dust control. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Okay. I'm, 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 you moved that, Jim? Uh, I propose it. I ask for a motion to accept it. Uh, Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. And can we also ask our two legislators to keep that in mind and do what you can? Call who you may, please. Follow up on that next week, please. Yeah. We're seeing a lot of memorializing resolutions going on all over this county for frivolous things. Maybe the board should pass a memorializing resolution that is acceptable to the people in the community, maybe like working during the day and at night. Maybe put something. Then we have to worry there. about the additional safety issues, though, because people are in and out of the building. That's what Warren was saying, that they'd like to do it at night. That'll cut down and might cut back on the time if they're able to get more done. Well, I think it's Warren brings more information back. You guys be able to make it better. That, right. That's exactly my where I was yeah. going. Yeah. I want to thank you for yeah. your input. That's we will uh, monitor the response that Mr. Tut's communications bring, and then we will discuss it on August first. Take the time. Yeah. I work. Right. Thank you. I'm taking the next item. We finished with this agenda item. Yes, sir. The next item on the agenda is a discussion of the Ulster Wastewater Treatment Facility incident on June 29th. Mr. Majuri is not here. 
I will read the statement that he provided to me so that the community is aware of the situation. On June 29th, 2024, at approximately 7 a.m., I was notified of an incident that occurred with the Ulster Digester building by the wastewater treatment plant op trainee Vincent Scalabro. The primary digester lid and the building had suffered extensive damage. Upon investigation, I determined that the failure occurred when the gas system piping under the liquid level of the primary digester failed. This filled the entire gas system with sludge. The sludge prevented the biogas to be processed by the gas system. While there are gas system safety systems in place to handle such event, they could not vent the amount of gas that was being produced. This production is a natural occurrence that happens as the sludge is being digested. The gas caused an overpressurization system that lifted the lid of the primary digester off the building and forced the sludge into the building. The damage included the digester lids and gas system, exterior brick wall of the building. There are also other areas of concern that are being examined. We have notified the New York State DEC of the event. Myself and my staff at the wastewater treatment plant have the operation stabilized and the building secured. I have had a few masonry companies come to the plant to give proposals on repairs to the brick wall of the building. John Garen and Travelers Insurance has been very, have been very helpful in ensuring that they will be with us through the process of repair or replacement of the damaged systems. What he's saying there is we have insurance. I also took immediate action to investigate possible replacement technologies for the systems. On July 2nd, 2024, I took a trip to New York's Southern Tier and looked into three different options for replacement. The systems we will need are custom made for each sewer plant for the exact process and site configuration. I have also had Bernier and Larios Engineering start to put the digester building into the CAD for expedited conversion to a new digester system. What he means there is the original plant was designed in the mid 1970s the plans are paper. The 1999 renovations are a combination of paper and CAD. Recent projects are all CAD based. Those three data sources have to be combined into one CAD file to provide an overall view of the entire project for the engineering required to address this system. This is an update on the status of the Ulster sewer digester system. And anyone has any questions, please have them contact for me for clarification. And that concludes the report for the incident at the Ulster Wastewater Treatment Plant. Any questions? Did we have uh, any monitoring equipment that we're was supposed to give a warning of this, or is that an unwarnable um, situation? The monitoring equipment was uh, associated with the safety equipment that failed. Oh, because of the failure of the pipes that that yes. made the warning system not work. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, I'd say a few things. One is uh, your plant, you know, has a liquid stream which you the town upgraded in the late '90s, and that's treating the wastewater as it goes uh, comes into the plant and ultimately is discharged to the creek. And then there's the solids handling end of the plant, which is sludge which you thicken, digest in these heated anaerobic digesters, which blew, and then um, dewater and get disposed of through the RRA to a landfill. Um, that system, the sludge handling was never, was really not touched in the 1990s when you updated the capacity of your liquid stream and put in much more advanced treatment at that time. Um, so your digesters are original, um, they're anaerobic, which means you heat the sludge in the absence of oxygen, creates a lot of gas, mostly methane, and normally that gas vents out through a waste gas burner in the roof. You have one floating roof for the primary digester and one fixed roof for your secondary digester. The floating di uh, uh, roof is the one that, you know, was the victim of this overpressurization. Um, 
Vincent did go to uh, Waverly, New York, which is out in the southern tier, um, uh, and Owego, New York, and one other plant uh, out in the southern tier, uh, past past Binghamton, and um, saw some processes he liked. On fr this Friday, we have a meeting with Kester, and they're coming to uh, to our office. Uh, Vincent's assistant will be there uh, for some presentation of of the of some of the alternatives but the way most plants are going now is they're getting away from uh pressure cooker digesters which you know where the sludge is stabilized before it's dewatered um in layman's terms it's like a pressure cooker on your stove and you know with and the and the top if if it can't vent the steam it can pop right so um that's what happened um most plants now are going to aerobic systems where you're aerating the sludge to stabilize it instead of heating it uh, to stabilize it. And so uh, Vincent was very impressed in particular with, I think, the facility in Owego, New York, uh, which is an old IBM town as well. Um, and uh, there they generated class A biosolids which means you don't have to send it to a landfill via the RRA if you can get your 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 solids your sludge classified as as class A it can go on farmland it can be spread it can be given away it doesn't have to be trucked to uh, Seneca Falls that's what malorganite is malorganite is class A sewer sludge right i believe so so that's a goal but we have did, we're digitizing the old 1974 drawings that were done by J. Kenneth Fraser and Associates firm up in Troy, and uh, starting to work with Vincent and his staff and technical reps from different manufacturers to see what will work best for the town. We'll come back with recommendations through your superintendent. I'm sure he was very very capable guy. So, any additional questions for Mr. Larios? Thank you. Um, for general reference, the town of Ulster had an Arcadis performed review of the plant in 2019. Total costs suggested for those improvements were about $6.6 .6 million. The digester was a component of the plant that was studied and recommended to be upgraded. We did a follow-up evaluation by Arcadis, I think in 2022. The costs had increased from $6 million to $12 million. And uh, the primary uh digester and the secondary treatments were the biggest portions of those expenses and were the most important parts of the plant to be upgraded. Mr. Majori and I had a meeting about a month ago with Kester and they talked about the various options to be deployed at our plant and the digester and the secondary treatment were both discussed at that time. Um, this was, we, we have been planning on upgrading this and I believe that at the present time, the guesstimate is that if we combine the two uh, projects, the secondary and the primary digestion, it's approximately $5 million plus. And uh, it's going to have to be financed somehow. Any other questions? Thank you. The next item under our agenda is the discussion on the open meetings law and caucus. I'd like to comment on Mr. Obajesk Obajeski's memo from presented at the last meeting, tonight's meeting was uh, totally unrehearsed, no caucus beforehand. If you notice on the agenda, there are dates on distribution of all the materials related to the distribution. They were all no sooner, no later than I say, three days prior to this meeting. The package was published yesterday, available for public consumption. One of the issues that Mr. Van Cleek has discussed with me is to make sure that this is a reoccurrence, which I advised him that that means that the agenda must be locked down with no changes and no opportunity for changes by Monday at 5 p.m. of the week of the town board meeting. I open the floor for discussion. Um, I'm, we have had a discussion about this, and I think we're largely in agreement. I think some of the comments that were made by us at uh, that past meeting that we had uh, and then some of the public comments were worthy. Uh, I think uh, the past practice has been uh, well-intended and honorable, but I think we can do better. 
And I think that's what we talked about that night. We can continue in as most things in life. You can always try to do better. I had emailed to all of you a uh, copy of uh, something I picked up on the New York State website about the open meetings. And in looking at that, we are largely in compliance. Even the way we were doing it was in compliance. Uh, the, the hindrance I noticed from that is that it was an un, uh, wasn't as open appearing a situation. The meetings that have been had in the uh, supervisor's office before the town board meeting uh, were not announced on the agenda. It's just we expected that the community remembered that we do this. The door has always been open. Both parties have been there. Both political parties have been there. Never has there been a decision made that I've witnessed while we're in there. It's been discussion and enhancement. However, I think the problem we talked about recently was that the public, for the most part, didn't get the benefit of hearing our discussion like we had tonight on a couple of topics. And what we began to look like was nodding heads up here. And I think we have the benefit of discussions with the engineer. We have the benefit of discussions with our our, our tax assessor, with our building inspector, with, with all the department heads at different times. And the community wasn't getting the benefit of that. It didn't know why we were doing what we were doing. So I think this idea, I think what we experimented with tonight, what I, thought, I think helped a bit. It seems like it's a longer meeting, but we started an hour later. So, you know, one of the things I may want to ask is maybe we'd want to think, can we start meetings at six rather than seven for one thing? But I'm not saying we should. I'd like to talk about it. Maybe Bill Kimball can't make it then. But that was a joke, Bill. Um, but uh, those are, th I, I, I think dialogue between us was just never seen by the public where now under what we did tonight, the dialogue is seen and this dialogue is not caustic. It's not harmful. And I don't think it would necessarily take more time, but I think it might be more informative for the public to see why, because unfortunately the norm is if it's not talked about, we're going to be assumed we're doing the wrong thing. That's just normal human nature. So I think out of credit to us, because I think what we're doing is intentionally positive and reading through this thing, but yeah, we could still do what we were doing, but I'd like to do better. Mr. Oberjeski, there's not much I agree with you on, but tonight's uh, recommendation and the display of what has happened here tonight I would fully endorse being the standard procedure to go forward. No caucus. Everything's on the floor. Every discussion item's on the floor. All the items are published three days in advance of the meeting. Um, I'm, I, I respect Mr. Obajeski, but this is the town board we're talking about, so no, only, no insult. But I do appreciate your comments, but we need to talk about how we want to do this. That is my recommendation. Well, I always like the second and third opinions that we always had in the caucus, but that's not stopping us from coming here a half hour or 45 minutes and sit right in here. Regis has a big question and now we didn't get a hold of anybody. We can talk about it right here. But, if, you know, you always like that second and third opinion. You know, and I don't have a problem coming in early. Okay. I don't either. I have no problem at all. Uh, can we make a motion? Can I make a motion that we come in here at six thirty instead to my fellow board member? What I would propose is that we reach we schedule the board meeting for six p.m. start, with the understanding that the first hour of the board meeting will be not would be a review of the agenda in the yeah. formal of, of the form of the prior caucus, totally open to the public, inviting the town department heads and moving forward on that basis. I Try it once and let's see what happens. Bingo. I was, I was going to, uh, what is this bingo game? I'm sorry. Correct. Correct. Yeah. We've always been using an hour in caucus. <laughs> okay, so then we can change it to 6.30. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I think that's your point, though. I think the thing is, try this. Try 6.30. See how and if we think that, hey, ladies and gentlemen, a week ahead of time, we've got to we got to talk about the sewer plan. So we're going to this meeting is going to start at six o'clock that week. And you can post that and announce it. It was 22 minutes. So, Jim, to your point and on this topic, 
I think what we're we're talking about is the idea of bringing all the benefits forward that we had in the caucuses, but doing them in a more public forum and uh, to try to enhance the public's knowledge of the work that is being done. Because uh, I don't think everybody knows the work that we've been doing because they don't see us doing it. So, and so the motion is on the floor uh, for 6.30, half hour, uh, quote unquote caucus, which is not technically true to the definition of caucus with the seven o'clock start of the formal town board meeting in a conformity with the agenda that is published. I like that. And it doesn't actually, I checked, it doesn't even have to be called caucus. It could be called work session. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. I second it. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Moving on to old business. This is a representation of a resolution that has been caused by uh, a requirement to re uh, extend the RUPCO conditional site plan approval because of their inabilities to start the project within the previously approved time frame. So I ask for a motion to adopt the resolution granting conditional site plan approval for the extension of Quality Housing Development Fund Company Inc. for 114 Route 28 Kingston Rupco. I make that motion. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. The next item is a, a resolution presented granting conditional site plan approval for bread alone for approximately 11,200 square feet addition and approximate 2,000 square foot second edition at 2121 Ulster Avenue, Lake Katrine. This resolution was presented two days ago, even though the agenda is a mistake. It says resolution in process. In June, the Town of Ulster Planning Board submitted to the Town Board a recommendation to forward to the Ulster County Planning Board a complete package for review. That package was reviewed by the Ulster County Planning Board on July 10th, and the town board has received a no impact, no county impact reply, which means that all the items that were originally identified by the county planning board as incomplete were adequately addressed by the professionals of bread alone in the subsequent submittal. The county planning board gave its total blessing. So with that, I would ask for a motion to accept the resolution. I am making that motion. And I'll second. Is there any discussion on the matter? The only comment that I have is I believe that our conditional has to do with uh, our confidence that Bread Alone will work with the sewer department to assure that the increased production and whatever else will continue as they have to work with the sewer department to make sure what comes into the system is processable by our sewer department. And in my discussions with them, I don't see that being a problem, but Unfortunately, we have to make that a condition, and we we are confident and trust that this is going to be taken care of because they have taken care of it in the past. But it does need to be officially addressed. So I am in full support of this. Ms. Reeve, may I have a roll call vote, please? Yes. 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 Thank you. The next item on our agenda is a resolution on the Halsey and Park Water District. I'd ask for Mr. Larios to make an explanation. What is this, Dennis's night? Yeah, as you know, uh, the, your, this board approved uh, an agreement with the Thruway, New York State Thruway Authority to furnish water from Halsey and Park Water District. Um, the town uh, proceeded to uh, attempt to acquire a widened easement between Frederick Drive and the Thruway Authority property for the installation of the service line, which the Thruway Authority is paying for, but the town is obligated to install. And uh, efforts to acquire the widened easement were unsuccessful. So, uh, and there's a there's a, a strict deadline um, on the construction schedule on the Thruway side of the fence. So, uh, I went and solicited um, directional drilling for the work in the easement only. It's not all the work that needs to be done, but um, so that we could drill from Frederick Drive to the Thruway Authority without really disturbing the easement. 
and we could go underneath the uh, existing storm system with a directionally drilled high density high density polyethylene water line. I met with the water superintendent on it, and we did get re received two quotes for the directional drilling, one from Roars Construction, who's done a lot of work for the town uh, and in the area. And the other from Merritt Construction, who's done a lot of work in the area and for the town, uh, both quality contractors. And uh, Roar's price was twenty eight thousand, and uh, Merritt's price was twenty nine thousand three hundred forty dollars. Very close. So we're met, uh, recommending you proceed to award this to Roar's for that portion of the work that's in the easement, where we could not acquire uh, the widened easement. I make a motion we do that. Do I have a second? Roll call vote, please. Unless there's discussion. Okay. Roll call vote, please. Yes. 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 He starts Tuesday. Hopefully he's finished by Friday. Could be. Let's hope. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chief Berardi. In reference to the Kingston Motel. Good evening, Town Supervisor, Town Board. Uh, as you're aware, back on June 27th, I copied you all in an email relative to uh, the County Executive and Commissioner of Social Services of my concerns with the uptick and calls at the Kingston Motel, formerly the Roadway Inn. Uh, obviously, uh, for the public that doesn't know, the Roadway Inn or Kingston Motel is being currently used as temporary housing uh, by Ulster County Department of Social Services. Uh, in June, I had seen that uptick uh, with a concern going into summer. I had written them an email requesting to meet relative to my concerns. Uh, I'm happy to report we have met in person twice uh, since that time. Well, yesterday was the, the second time. Um, and some of the concerns were uh, unsupervised children, uh, lack of activities for children. Uh, currently, there is uh, 70 plus children housed at the Kingston Motel. And with summer months, obviously school's out. Uh, if they're not enrolled in camp or some type of activity, uh, they're running about the property. Um, some of the crimes that are occurring as a result of uh, the adults that are living there, uh, domestics, psychiatric emergencies, um, bites, uh, and such. Uh, so like I said, my last meeting or the second meeting was yesterday. Uh, since that time, I'm uh, happy that the motel is going to meet with a security company, private security company, and then employ them to help, uh, aid in the law enforcement uh, activities up there. Um, the Bruderhof is partnering with the motel. They're going to instruct uh, a new and improved playground uh, at the facility for all the residents' uh, children to utilize. Uh, DSS is providing regular office hours at the motel for residents to seek assistance from their office um, so they don't need to travel to their uh, main office on Ulster Avenue. Uh, Ulster County Youth Bureau is working on programs um, to engage youth short term and long term, especially since summer summer camps are mostly ending in about a month or so, uh, and that in between time between summer camps and when school starts, uh, they want to come up with long term programs uh, that can engage them. Ulster County is planning on renting uh, a type of party tent um, or a structure like in that in order for families and children to gather. Uh, for programs due to a uh, limited amount of indoor space up there. Uh, they're also working with non-for-profits and other organizations to provide more nutritious food due to the lack of kitchen facilities. Excuse me. Um, Ulster County Sheriff's Office Safe Team uh, stands for support and advocacy through frontline engagement. That's sent out a survey uh, to all the residents in order to see what uh, their needs are or what they would like to see. A uh, social worker from that team will be uh, also having office hours up there one day a week in order to meet with the, the clients. Uh, my staff, as well as the sheriff's office, are coming up with try to, and the biggest thing of this was 
uh, my my staff was starting to see the negative interaction uh, the children were seeing with us uh, because of the lack of a uh, positive response we were uh, responding up there for. So we're working on several trips, uh, small day trips and stuff like that. We'll volunteer our time, uh, either trips to the pool, a kickball game, maybe a trip to the county fair that's coming up. Uh, so we're in the process of doing that, as well as I have assigned my staff to do regular checks of the property, uh, not just uh, reactive, but proactive in order to try to reduce some of this uh, activity that we're seeing up there. Questions, questions, questions from the board? Great job. Yeah, very Excellent. good job. Proactive, yeah. And you're getting cooperation? That you, you, it sounds like you are. I mean, uh, the, yes, motel has been nothing but helpful. Uh, I'm happy to report today. As of today, they ordered the uh, swing set or play set structure. I mean, we're we're talking of excess of uh, you know fifteen thousand dollars for this place that structure they're purchasing uh, jointly up there. So hopefully that will be in within three weeks of delivery. And uh, the Bruderhof has agreed to prep the site and install it uh, labor free on their part. Wow! When the county executive's office contacted me in October of two thousand twenty-three to advise me that they were opening the hotel back up. They assured me they were going to be taking the lead. Mr. Berardi, many of the things you described tonight sounds like you're the catalyst of the changes, and I want to compliment you on that. Thank you. But that's not the role that I was promised by the county. And I think the citizens in this community should understand the county made a decision, and we're now paying the price. We're going to do the best we can, and I know you will. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you, Chief. Mr. Van Cleek, the last item on the agenda is Archtop Fiber. You initiated a conversation while I was on vacation. You indicated that they were to call me last week while you were on vacation. They never did. So it's understood, yes. And uh, the, today we did receive an email to the, from them. And the man standing over there is not just tired of sitting. He's standing because he's the guy that sent the email. And if you'd like to come forward, you may, but I can just say that we are in receipt of an email where Archtop Fiber confirmed that they understand all the concerns that I put in that email that I sent out. It was specifically our water department was very concerned that your uh, fiber lines may be running near our fire hydrants and shutoffs. And you have given the letter that I asked for, and that is you've said that you will be responsible and that you will make every effort and uh, you did a, you, you've been a good neighbor and you said you would be and i did challenge you on that and you stepped up to the plate and delivered us did you all see the letter did you get it we got this email today and so we, thank you Sean. if you want to say something you can i have for. paper copies if anybody haven't gotten their emails yet here it says it's over there. It's over there. Just keep in mind, I want to mention something. Keep in mind, uh, our highway superintendent, the guy who's in charge of the sewer plant and the guy who's in charge of the water department, they're big people. And if they get upset. Okay. That wasn't a threat. It was just advice. I'm Italian. I understand. Six foot what? Good, good. Jim's got your phone number, your cell phone number, and probably any other way of contacting me. So, all right, good. Thank Thanks, you Sean. very much. Good. I make a motion that the town board accepts the letter that was presented tonight and authorizes the commencement under the terms and conditions cited therein of the fiber optic cables by Archtop Fiber into the town's right away. I make that motion. You got a first and a second. I formed it. First and second. Any discussion? No, sir. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? There you are, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our scheduled agenda, with the exception of going into executive session. Sir, and sir, as sir, is sir, customary, Jim, Jim, could I just, I'm sorry to interrupt. I had mentioned before and I asked you about it the dog park law, which I didn't understand. We have to have that scheduled. So that discussion will come up in August. So. That had had its public hearing. We were allowing the 30 days. They didn't get it on the agenda, so that will be dealt with. So thank you, Jim.
As is customary before going into executive session, we have public open comment. If there's anyone here tonight, Mr. Obajeski, please. My name is uh, Regis Obajeski, 170 Ledger Road, Town of Ulster. Uh, <clears throat> Jim, I think we, uh, you, well, you said we don't agree very much, but I'll tell you, this this was a hell of a meeting. This was really good. And uh, I, I also did uh, an, an, another another look, I spent several hours looking not, not only at the OML itself, the open meetings law, but all the uh, interpretations, um, you know, of various um, uh, court uh, court actions uh, with regard with regard to it, and uh, you know I I don't I don't necessarily think that uh, that the uh, well I I don't want to spoil a good thing because this was terrific, and I had a prepared uh, prepared statement tonight which I'm not going to bother with it's not uh, it's not 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 germane because uh, you know you you did you did a you did a great thing here tonight. And I, I just want to say that uh, that uh, this is really, and as far as my understanding of the open meetings law and the spirit of it, as well as the uh, the letter of it, uh, is right here uh, tonight. So thank you. Iron sharpens iron. Thank you. Any additional comments from anyone, sir? Good evening. I am Vicki Lucarini. I live at 170 Ledge Road. I just have a question on um, item, um, agenda item number seven, I believe it is. And it is the payment number one on the replacement uh, of 0.45 MG portable water storage tank uh, to the Arnold Construction Company. Um, in relation to this art, um, agenda item. Did I hear correctly that you're giving back grant money? We have $500,000 granted to us under the Ulster County infrastructure. It is a requirement of the grant that we, that, that amount represent no more than 33%, I think of the project, which would imply $1.5 million in total cap capital expended. We're not going to hit 1.5. And because we don't hit 1.5, we're not eligible to draw, I think it's about $30,000 based upon the current projected costs of the project. So the project is going to come in under budget. And okay. because it comes in under budget, we're not able to draw the full grant. This frequently happens in grant programs where they set a max funding percentage. Okay. No, I, I it's just that in my experience working for Dutchess County, um, in public health, it was a no-no to give back grant money, but I can understand that this is a different situation. So it's a capital project with yeah. a defined scope where I can't expand the scope without their approval to spend the money that we have left over. Yeah, that's unfortunate, but okay. Um, and also, um, I just want to comment that I've learned a lot tonight with listening to your discussions. And I really appreciate you um, doing this instead of having the caucus beforehand and not uh, hearing those discussions. I find that um, I have really benefited from hearing the discussions as a citizen of this town. And thank you very much. Any additional comments, sir? My name is Chris Constantino, and I live in Lake Tree. Uh, last year, I put in an application for part-time job in parks. This year, I did the same thing. I never heard anything about them. I asked Mr. Van Cleet the last time we were here, and he was going to get back to me. I haven't heard a word. The applications for, for the park for the job... No. I said, did you call me? Did you talk to me? Did you? Okay. But you didn't answer me. I could have changed. I could have changed it, whatever it was. But you never even notified me for anything. And 
And you're the guy that said, okay, but you guys sat here and said nobody was putting applications in for the jobs. And I did, and nobody notified me at all. And I don't think that was nice. And I didn't really put in to get a job because I don't need the job. I just did it because you guys had no applications, I was told. So I put an application in and nothing happened. I wasn't even notified. Okay. And I'm sorry, you're correct. I thought and I saw that your application said no weekends. And I thought we were done with that because it said no weekend. So I'm oh, sorry. That's my that's my fault. You would have to call a person and find out, right? No, it's not. Or let me know that's what what's going on. Okay. okay. My fault. I got it. And one more thing. I'm very happy, Ms. Quickly, that you're back where you are. Thank you. Any additional public comment? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, at this point, I call for a motion to go into executive session for discussions regarding current litigation, which is an acceptable topic under the Amer uh, Opens Meetings Law for executive session. The yes, please. Oh, yes, they were. Yep. All right. I'll make that second. Excuse me. Florida Sam Ventures versus the town of Ulster. Going right in. No, I want to. That's you're okay. We're going in for executive session.